Well, I'm having a go at making this uh, high gain collinear uh, antenna for 1296 that uh, that appeared in print uh, way back in 1986. So it's a series of nine sections of coaxial cable soldered together, and apparently it has quite a lot of gain. So I'm beginning to cut up the sections here, and uh, I'll show you. Um, step by step how I, uh, I make it and I hopefully it'll work well. So we're using RG213 cable and the first step was to cut nine lengths 88 millimeter long, uh, be as exact as possible within one millimeter. And then we're gonna take 18 millimeter off the sheath at each end to expose the braid. So we measure it as accurately as we can, as I said. Now I use this um, single blade pipe cutter to put a, a ring mark around the the sheath. You could you could attempt to draw a, a circle around with a marker pen, I guess, but this is accurate. So I tighten it up fairly tight and put one full turn around. Now I could possibly keep going with the pipe cutter and cut the sheath but I could risk damaging the the uh, the braid so I'd rather use the standing knife because I can feel the braid underneath doing it this way. So I'm going around following the marker line from the pipe cutter and I can feel the braid under underneath. Just once around's enough. And then put one cut one cut down the center and then peel off carefully with the side cutters. Oop, there we go. Cat's jumped up. And then checking 18 millimeter. Now having cut all the the sheath off the uh, nine pieces of uh, coax. The next step is to tin the, um, the the copper braid. So I'll just show you how we do that with a fairly heavy duty soldering line. Good uh, good hot irons necessary. slowly rotating the blade the braid around as you apply the solder. Until we get a complete coating all the way around. It takes a little while to do but it's an important step in the construction. Alright. So there's the finished uh, tinning of each piece and then there's the rest of them down there so we've got all nine done so we're on to the on to the next step now the next step in making the 23 centimeter antenna is to take eight millimeter off the end of each of the pieces of uh, coax uh, so cut through the the braid. Now the way I'm doing it is with a Dremel tool down here but you could do it with a, a hacksaw and device and so forth but this is how I'm, I'm doing it. After going around, I'll cut a slot uh, down the side. And all being well, I should be able to peel it off with the side cutters. And there we have it. So we do that to each of the pieces, each end. 
There we go. Well, they're they're all uh, all done. The um, shield's been taken off uh, eight millimetre back, and we're uh, up to the next step. The next step is to take off the uh, remainder of the insulation at the end here, uh, but allowing for one one millimetre uh, of insulation just just to put just to uh, prevent any shorts. So we're going to run the Stanley knife all the way around, allowing for one millimetre spacing. And we get some lines. And there we go. So we've taken uh, off that little bit so we're gonna we'll do the same to the other end there and here's some that I've prepared before and then we tinned them we tinned them ready for uh, joining together now I've finished preparing the end of this the pig tail which will connect to the an antenna cable the actual connector coaxial cable and I've prepared the end the same as the stubs the short stubs here so they'll be joined up in a fashion I'll show you shortly and the next step is I'm going to put on a uh, a ballon copper sleeve this is it here and this will go down here at a specific distance exact distance and solder down here and this is to prevent um, RF coming back down the coax so I'll show you how I do that now so I've I've cut away the bra the sheath, the specified distance down from here. There's a specific distance from here to the beginning of the choke and then the length of the choke to here. So I'm going to wrap some tin copper wire around here and I'm going to attempt to solder, solder the end of the copper tube to the braid. And as I said, this will act as a, as a uh, choke to prevent um, RF coming back down, down to the down to the transmitter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start tinning the end of the copper tube now. I'll slip back a bit. I'll slip this down. And it should be the 72 millimeter. Yeah, it shoots a little bit less. Let's see if I can heat it up and slide it over a bit more. Uh, probably won't be able to. That's going nicely. So the next step is to solder each of the sections together with the uh, inner conductor uh, soldered to the uh, outer sheath. I'll show you in the close-up. So each of these sections is going to be soldered together. Right, we've got the big guns out now, so let's see where we go. That's better. So I've soldered each of these sections together and I'm just going to finish off the last tail here and there's the choke connected to the fly lead which has got the end connected at the far end. So here's the completely soldered collinear antenna, each section 
nose to tail and then there's a short circuit at the very end which later on we just adjust for best SWR so here's the completed antenna 23 centimeter antenna before I'm about to insert it into the tube and then fill with epoxy resin all right so I prepared 100 mil of epoxy resin here and I've added the required amount of hardener 100 mil I've worked out is going to half fill the tube so I'm going to do that and then I'll slide in the antenna but we'll do this first Now I'm going to rotate it because I think that might help get it to all go together. It's down to the bottom. I've got to leave it for 24 hours vertical. It's right to the top, that's good. Okay. That was easier than I thought. Here's the, um, the fully sealed antenna with the epoxy resin. Now I put some glad wrap on the end here to, uh, to stop the epoxy from sealing the top on. So I'll take it off now and then we're going to have to cut away the, the, uh, the, the resin to expose the top of the coax. Well I finally exposed the end of the antenna here and this is how we adjust the SWR so I'm going to take it inside and uh, just see what it's reading and either lengthen or shorten Ok so uh, I've got the uh, rig tuned to the Dural uh, beacon 1296.420 and it's coming in quite well not showing anything on the S meter but quite a good copy now what I'm going to do is I'll uh, go through the, the different portions of the band and have a look at the SWR. Alright, so I'm 12.96 now and when I transmit the rig puts out about just a bit over 5 watts and then when I turn to reverse SWR barely, re barely lifting the needle so that's pretty good. Alright, that's 12.93 megahertz and we're putting out about just under 7 watts and barely lifting the needle again and we'll go down to 1273 that's 1273 putting out oh yeah, a bit more there about 8 watts and SWR also barely move, moving the needle alright we'll go down now that's about the, the useful range but I'll go down lower and we'll just see we'll go down to say uh, 12 1263 maybe says 1263 putting out about 8 watts and SWR fractionally high but still pretty good since building the antenna I've obtained this Andritsu SWR bridge and it's now looking at 900 megs to 1500 megs and the red marker is on 1280 megs and it's uh, 1.2 to 1 and the blue marker is on 1296 and that's 1 1.09 to 1 so I think uh, you'll agree that it's uh, quite a good result for a home, uh, homemade vertical antenna that's uh, got a low SWR over quite a range